Thank you for this coming and visiting us for this next segment of Hamfest TV, sponsored by Gigaparts. My name is Emmett Hohensee, W0QH, that's Whiskey Zero Quebec Hotel. I'm the chief engineer of radio waves, and I build radio antennas. And my guest today is uh, Mark Brown, N4BCD. I really like that. I like that call sign. I really do. Thanks, Emmett. <laughs> Binary coded decimal. And he, by the way, used to work for TI, so that's kind of an interesting uh, coincidence. Quinky Dink yeah, is a friend of years at Texas Instruments. Oh, my. Uh, this segment, we're going to be talking about the Anon Labs Apache SDR. Uh, the Anon 100, and in this case, we've also got the, I think I've got the 100 or the 200 up here. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the, uh, the really neat, new developing world of the SDR radio and how it's kind of melted between, you know, the old radio tube set to the high-tech computer filter programmer and so on. It's, a, it's an interesting uh, architecture, uh, Emmett. Uh, I just got out of a forum with, uh, just 30 minutes ago with Rob Sherwood, NC0B, who, of course, uh, uh, from uh, Colorado, publishes his re receiver test reports. Uh, while he didn't come out with numbers on the uh, on the 200 yet, he's had one. He ran it in a uh, CQ160 uh, contest, Stu Perry, uh, last December. He's run several different uh, uh, SDRs, the Flex uh, 60 uh, Signature Series, and uh, and other high performance radios. He's uh, he's had very good luck with these with these radios. Uh, s continuing software fixes, um, a lot of good things he had to say about these, but they're they're challenging to test. Uh, oh, because yes. they don't behave like uh, traditional uh, traditional radios, uh, and they don't even hook up radios. like a regular radio either, right. do they? So uh, it was very very informative. I, I'm, he's going to be at our banquet tonight, so I'm I'm looking forward to spending some one-on-one uh, -on -one time where he doesn't yeah. he doesn't talk officially, but uh, unofficially. You get, to look, you get to literally kind of open up the the can a little bit and look underneath the hood and, and see you know really what his thoughts are about the products. And he was uh, it was very uh, very informative uh, or. He uh, he stopped. He was one of the first visitors to the Apache Labs booth at Gigaparts up in Dayton uh, back in uh, back in May. Right, right. Uh, he's very intrigued by the product, and it continues to improve. The software continues to evolve. It just keeps getting better. And from a price performance standpoint, um, the situational awareness that uh, the, you know the radio, the display, the spectrum display on these radios, uh, if you can, can compare it to a signature series. It's uh, it's phenomenal. It, right. It's, not, it's it's even better than the TS nine ninety Kenwood. Uh, the the resolution you can get, uh, the the spikes. If you can see something, you can work it. Well, the one interesting thing I think about the SDR product lines uh, is that it's user participating. It, it's um, the people who are out there playing with the product are actually experimenting with new lines of code, new ways of doing things, and and coming up with new filters. Um, a good example is the just the front end, which this is Power SDR, which is the same product that was developed for the Flex Radio, but it's it's a user defined product. When I when I got involved with this, uh, uh, scarcely a month before Dayton to uh, to learn the product and and to be able to speak about the product up there, um, I got a, I I joined the Yahoo News group and the uh, the feedback, the user feedback that. Uh, the, the user community can can provide to something like this. It's it's a worldwide community. So if you've got a problem with the radio at midnight, and post a and there's post someone a question, out there, somebody in in Asia is awake, and it's their daytime, and you've got an answer within minutes, literally minutes. You've um, just recently become acquainted with the product. You had it for about a month. Tell tell, tell me about your experiences and some of the the pluses and the minuses for you. I had a great time with this radio. Um, Gigaparts provided it to me, a, a, like I said, 30, 30 days ahead of Dayton with a Lenovo laptop that had a touch screen. Uh -huh. and, that, so it's like, the, like this one right here? It was yeah. very much like having a traditional radio with knobs and buttons. Right. Uh, to be able to... If you don't have a touch screen, uh, you're relegated to using the, the knobs the, or the, the, mouse, the mouse, yeah, and the keyboard. But having a touch screen is a huge plus in using one of these radios because if you want to change modes or bands, single side band, CW, uh, thirty. You just meters, push the button meters, on the screen. Push the button on the screen, and there you wow. are. So, like the new Microsoft Surface type products, would really integrate well with the uh, with the Anon as far as. Well, the other part, too, is you can create your own screens. I think that was kind of a cool thing. You can pretty um, I'm, much... I'm aware that you can do that. Uh, you can change the screen colors, uh, skins, if you will, right. and, and do a lot of stuff like that. Uh, in addition, you know, 
speaking of the screens and, and the Power SDR, I think there are six or seven different software versions that this radio will run under. And uh, uh, one of them that I didn't investigate, but I've seen pictures of, where you can literally capture the entire HF spectrum. Yes. And I can't imagine how a human could, uh, could yeah, comprehend good. all that he's seeing, but uh, you can you can see uh, the the entire spectrum. Interesting from, from thing. I've got I dog do, whistle to, to yeah, daylight. I do have one of these myself, and one of the things that I found really interesting was using that software you were talking about and and looking at an entire spectrum from. 1 megahertz all the way up to 60 megahertz and seeing everything that's going on all at once. It's phenomenal. I can't imagine using all that yeah. data. Yeah, well, the thing is, you see the big you signal, you click on it, and then you're there. And then, for instance, on, uh, well, we build the hex beam radio antenna. Hooking this radio up to hex beam ra antenna, you literally can, you know, cover, let's say, 20 meters through 6 meters. If you see something going on on 20 meters, you click on the signal, and you're there. Which is phenomenal. I, I can't imagine uh, to be able to see that much spectrum. Uh, I, it's I, scary, I, I, isn't it? It's unfortunate. I didn't get a chance to do that. Uh, Thirty yeah. months, uh, thirty days went by very quickly. Yeah, looking it's at this too radio. much. Too much having fun. Now, uh, w one of the things I did do with this radio is, uh, of course, the D in the in the product number uh, specifies diversity. Right. And uh, the the two hundred D that I was using, uh, I do have a beverage antenna. And uh, I, I hooked up the beverage antenna to the, to the receive input. To the receive input, and, right? And uh, the uh, the ability to to steer a directive array uh, isn't it phenomenal? It, you get this able, thing that looks like a radar scope on your screen. It's literally a radar scope where you yeah. can change magnitude and phase between two antennas, right? Uh, to uh, to null out an interfering signal or to peak a very weak signal. Uh, it is uh, to a DXer. It is just absolutely phenomenal. A good example where I live, I've got I got two DX 160s, 160 meter DX antennas. One's going northwest, the other one's going uh, no, excuse me, north south. The other one's going east and west. You go into diversity receive, and it's a whole new world. It's like having a beam, you know, it's effectively. Literally a 160 meter receive yeah. beam. Yeah, yeah, um, and it's phenomenal. It, it is just amazing. Uh, it. It works very well. Uh, unfortunately, I had this at a time uh, not in the dead of winter, right, right. but I could appreciate the benefits of having something like that year yeah, round. Where being you able could, to play you know, with that gray line, t you know, when, when propagation, uh, 160 gray line, you don't know which angle of arrival you're going to get. Exactly. So, uh, so you can pretty much figure that stuff out just by works. playing with the diversity receive. It works very, very. Well. I um, originally became familiar with the diversity receive with the Flex 5000, uh, which I also used to have. Uh, when I started working with the, between the two, the uh, the difference is phenomenal. On the receive side, the receiver is just, I, I can't find anything that's a comparable product to it. Um, I look at it more as a lab instrument when it comes to, um, as far as its ability to do things that I really couldn't do in the past. And then plus when you go to the software and you're using the, the software-defined radio software, it is really, it changes the way you look at, uh, working working radio. For instance, let's say we were doing a, a DX competition on 20 meters. You see the whole spectrum, and you can pick where you want to go. To pick where you want to go, um, especially in a ready contest, uh, oh, you yeah. can find holes in the. Uh, you can find holes to to to, to establish a run frequency uh, very very easily. The resolution on this is better than any uh, any hardware radio. Um, right. Currently, I'm I'm using a TS 990. Uh, it does have a That's very a good nice band. radio. Uh, yes, it, and, and and Rob talked about this, uh, talked about that particular radio and several others. It does have a good band scope, but but as far as SDR radios, right. the Flex series and right. and these uh, and these Apache Labs radios, no hardware radio will hold a candle to what these software what these can do. Right. Can do as far as screen resolution and situational awareness in in a contest or in a pileup working DX. Uh, you can find an opening in the pileup. Say, okay, right. I'm going to plant myself here. Right He's there. 2.3 kilohertz up and, yep. and and work the DX. And then the other night, what did you find when you were installing it and putting it all together? What was uh, what were the key things that you really liked about, you know, hooking it up and getting it working? Was it, was it very difficult? It was not too difficult. I had some help from uh, from the uh, – there's a there's a North American uh, computer guy that, that, that will help walk you through it. I'm not a computer expert. I did get it up and working, but optimizing – uh, I did get some help, uh, and 
I just can't recall the name right, right now. Right. But uh, Gigaparts, uh, and uh, and you guys, uh, when you're when you're selling these radios, you do offer a service package where you got to right. where you can uh, right. where you can get some on on site help, uh, literally over the phone, where he takes control of your computer via Team Viewer, and uh, and makes that. Uh, and makes the tweaks and necessary corrections to both this software and Windows. Right, uh, right. Turns, turns off essential things in Windows that you yeah. never need anyway. It's, it's funny how Windows can really muck things up sometimes, and you never realize it until you start using high-performance yeah. products. You mentioned something a minute ago, and I wanted to bring it up. Uh, something Rob mentioned in his, uh, in his program about uh, pre-distortion. Right. Uh, this is something I didn't get a chance to play with, but I'm I'm aware that this software allows through pre distortion to to offer you a very good transmit IMD. Oh, most definitely. Um, on the on the D model, it's built inside, so you're not having to build up this external circuit to get rid of that all that distortion. Right. So you 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 essentially have a very very clean uh, yes. uh, transmitter. He's he, uh, Rob mentioned that. Uh, the hardware guys, the the Kenwoods, the Icoms of the right. world, are going to play catch up. They're going to well, they've got to because it's uh, it's such a clean trans. Everyone, everyone that I've ever talked to on the radio using the Anon has always asked me, "What am I using?" Because my signal is sharp, meaning there's no noise on on either end. And some of the other people that are using SDR radios look at the signal; and it's pure, which is that's why they call it pure signal. I guess pure signal. And yeah. Like I said, I didn't get a chance to play with it, but uh, clearly it works from what I've heard and. We can't. We can't fall. Right. Sure. Right. Well, anyway, in uh, uh, closing, what do you what uh, what are your thoughts of the of the of the Anon? It, it will give the Flex a serious run for its money. I think and so. From a price performance standpoint, um, like I said, Rob's numbers aren't out, but I believe they will be at or exceeding the sixty seven hundred series of the Flex. Well, imagine they've even got software now where you can hook this up on your network and you can have multiple terminals listening. Because you have multiple receivers in the radio itself, you can have multiple terminals, you know, multiple ra- mul- multiple computers listening to different frequencies at the same time. The versatility of this radio with the different software packages lends itself to more. It gives a, it gives the user more latitude right. in, in their style of operating. Something right. might be suited to PSK and the and the digital modes WS, uh, WSDJ. Right. Uh, a phone guy might want to use a different implementation of Power SDR, a CW contest, or something else. Still. So uh, there's a lot of opportunity, and, and like I said, support by the user community. Right. Uh, those software packages keep getting improved and getting improved quickly. Yep. Well, Mark, I really appreciate you spending time with me this afternoon. And, Thank you. Uh, it's been great speaking with you again. It was fun playing playing uh, radio with you. The I think it was the last time when Gigaparts had their their family their open house, yeah, and so you got to play based. with the seventy six hundred and uh, and then the the Anon, which I thought was kind of a, a good parallel. Okay. Well, thank you much, Mark. Yes, and you thank have a you good Anna. day. Uh, we'll be seeing you on down the log. Appreciate it. Seventy threes.